My seven gram trip put the fear of God in my heart. This trip is the one where I learned the mushroom is nothing to play around with. The mushroom is powerful. It will change your whole life. This is not to be glorified. This is not to be romanticized. Like that, I know I'm like, whatever, goofy, fun, whatever you want to call it. This is not to be romanticized. The mushroom is not to be portrayed as this fun, loving, happy-go-lucky, ray of sunshine type of friend. The mushroom will kick your ass. The mushroom will scrape you, okay? Mollywop you. The mushroom will yank your whole soul out your body, okay? I need people to understand the mushroom is really, really serious. Yes, I've had these really beautiful, profound experiences, but this experience is the one that taught me you want to go play in the realm of gods? Don't be surprised when you end up with a god-sized responsibility. It is because of this trip that I will no longer trip with another person. Um, it, it is because of this trip that it's difficult for me to have relationships with people who don't partake in the medicine because they just don't understand that there is a whole world above our world. Like there is a whole reality that is existing right here, right now. We just can't see it. You can feel it, but you can't see it. And it is because of this trip that I began to take the mushroom seriously because I saw the, the sight, I experienced physical pain and I saw my friend go through an existential crisis. All right, let's get into it. So my seven gram trip was October 15th, 2020. And I was in a class. My teacher that had the five day class from my last video had a six month class where she taught us different ways to use the mushroom. Um, because of this class, I learned how to hold a proper medicine ceremony for myself, how to properly honor the mushroom. And that I believe that's why this trip was so freaking insane this was the by far the craziest trip that i've ever had so october 15th me and a bunch of other people who were in the class we're all gonna trip on the same day to see if we can go meet up on the other side so the day of the trip comes and immediately from the time I wake up, I am starting to prepare for ceremony. And I've really learned that in shamanic traditions, like for example, the medicine bag by who, I can't remember his name, I'll put it on the screen, a book called The Medicine Bag. He teaches you in that book that the preparation for the ceremony is just as vital and important as the ceremony itself. So as soon as I wake up, I'm starting to clean the house. I'm, well, my homegirl, I'm tripping at my homegirl's house. She starts cleaning the house. I start gathering incense. I gather um, cascarea powder, which cascarea powder is um, eggshells that have been crushed down into a powder. And it's to provide protection for you while you're on the other side, just like the shell protects the baby in the egg, this shell is put on your body to help protect you as well. Prior to these trips, I wasn't doing anything to protect myself on the other side. I'll get into why that's important later. I prepared my cascarea powder. I prepared um, some cacao. Um, I prepared, see, I believe I had cedar. I had mugwort. I had lavender. I had all of these different herbs that I was going to burn 
while we were tripping. So I get to her house around 6 p.m. and we immediately begin to prepare for ceremony. The first thing that we did was we set up an altar so that we could pay homage to the people who did the work so that we are able to do the work today. Honoring and acknowledging the ancestors is so important because they will show up for you, but you have to call upon them. You can't just, oh man, I was so naive, man, prior to this trip. I ain't know nothing about nothing. We set up an ancestor altar and we prayed over it and we gave offerings of candy, flowers, um, I believe with some food there. We just wanted to show the ancestors that we know you are there. We know you are real and we know that you are there to guide us. So we set up an ancestor altar and then, oh, Jesus, and then we begin to prepare the ceremony. So the mushrooms are sitting on the altar, right? And we sit in front of the altar and we say prayers, we say affirmations, we um, cover our face, our hands and our feet in the cascarea powder. We uh, pray over protection for our souls. And the reason why protection is important, because remember in my last video, I said, there's nothing to fear because you're fearing yourself, right? So the reason why you want to protect yourself in on the other side is because you do have a negative side, yin and yang. You do have darkness in you. And unless you're ready to confront that darkness, you need to be quite clear before you go in that you want to be covered in light. So we cover ourselves in the powder. We say our we say our prayers. We're burning rosemary and lavender and mugwort because smoke can actually be used as a technology. Oh, you! I'm gonna have to make a different video about that because it's gonna take too long. I don't want this video to be an hour. So we first begin by breaking up the mushroom because it makes it easier to chew. Seven grams is quite a lot to chew. Um, and we eat, I chose honey as my, um, mixer to help the mushroom go down a bit easier. And my friend chose a lemon. Now, remember what I said in my last video, a lemon is going to make your trip more intense. Um, so we're eating the mushroom. She's eating the honey and I'm eating the honey and she's eating the lemon after every bite. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Prior to us eating the mushroom, we drank fresh cacao. It's hot chocolate, but I made it myself. I used fresh cacao powder um, and date sugar, coconut sugar. And I made fresh hot chocolate. The reason why you can use hot chocolate or chocolate of any form with a trip is because chocolate is an MAOI, meaning it's going to prevent your liver from digesting the psilocybin. Psilocybin is the active ingredient in the mushroom that causes the trip. So it prevents your liver from digesting psilocybin, meaning you trip longer than had you not taken the cacao. So if you wanna trip longer, eat chocolate 30 minutes before your trip. If you want your trip to come out real strong, fast and hard, eat a lemon or orange juice with your, with your mushroom. So we, we, we drink the cacao, we eat the mushroom, and my homegirl's having a very hard time getting it down. I was able with the honey, the honey really masked the flavor of the mushroom. So I think that's why my homegirl had such a hard time because she's over here gagging and we're trying to help her breathe through her nausea. And I mean, she's just like, Ugh! like every two seconds. And so we had to really help her breathe through this experience, me and the trip sitter. So I swear to you, as soon as I got done eating the mushroom, 
we, I was there. Like I already began to feel the effects. Uh, we were fasted. We had fasted all that day. We had breakfast that morning, a light, small breakfast, but we were fasted. And I believe that's why I started to feel it so intensely. So the first, at first, um, I began to feel a bit anxious because you can feel the climb. It's like you're going up a roller coaster and you, you know you are about to drop. And it's that kind of sensation. And what I've learned that when you feel that sensation, don't fight it. The reason why you became you become anxious is because you're fearing the drop. Stop it. Stop it. Just let it happen. Don't try to manage it. Just let whatever is going to happen, happen. So I immediately become very, very cold. When I, I was chilled down to my bones, I, it was like a cold that I could not escape. So I get in the bed and I cover myself up with a blanket. And it's crazy because my homegirl had the exact opposite. She became extremely hot. Her body broke out in a full sweat. She had to take off all her clothes and I let I had to lay down and get very, very still. She had to get up and she actually began to dance. She danced her ass off. So I'm in the bed being very, very still and cold. She's in the corner, sweating her ass off, dancing her ass off. And eventually she lays down. And I have to, I'm, I'm going to try to tell as much of this experience as I can, but I don't want to tell someone else's story. You get me? So I'm going to tell as much of this as I can without telling her story because this became a blended experience. Um, so she lays down and we, we, we cuddle up with each other. Um, we're, very, we're pretty close already. Um, so we cuddle up with each other and our energies balance out. She because she cools down, I warm up. So we become this like balanced energy. And as the trips, as the trip is going, the first thing that I hear is how do I prove? So you want me to prove I'm God. Ooh, I could that's the first thing I hear is, so you want me to prove I'm God? And then this voice is a male voice. And it starts explaining why God is God. Like, Um, so this voice begins explaining why, who God was before there was no physicalness. And it goes to on explain why God decided to pour into a physical experience and become the whole universe. It explains it's just explaining all these things. Literally, I it, the next day, it was impossible for me to remember. And that was also part of the explanation was why it's the reason why it's impossible for the human mind to understand God is because it, it is beyond the human mind's capability to understand, to conceptualize this. So I'm hearing all of this stuff. And my homegirls there, and we're, we're we we stayed connected. If we if we were touching some kind of way the whole trip, and I stop hearing the male voice, and I start remembering things from my childhood, and I would remember something, and I would open my eyes, and she would open her eyes at the exact same time. And she said, show me another one. She said, it's okay, keep going. So I closed my eyes.
I have I've never told this story to anyone, so it's hard. I close my eyes and I sh I begin to think of a memory of me as a child. 